So you see uh, that uh, there is the uh, truck body builder network and uh, you know that uh, a truck sometimes has some body applications and people name this differently, but the most uh, common name is body application. Uh, and uh, the people who make the body application, they are called themselves body builders. Uh, so uh, it's interesting and a funny term uh, that uh, is quite usual in, in this industry. What, are, what is a bodybuilder network? Uh, the truck and trailer bodybuilders, they like to standardize the interfaces to the telematic gateways. You can imagine that if you have such a body application, you also want to make preemptive maintenance. You want to know what is the, this body application is doing, how often a door is open, how often the cooling has failed, and whatever you like to, to observe with your, uh, in the cloud that you need a telematic gateway. Um, those companies making body applications are sometimes very small and sometimes uh, the market is very fragmented. This means uh, they are not able to provide their own, own cloud services. So they need standardized gateways uh, from their applications into the cloud. Truck and bodybuilders also like to standardize the interface to the in-vehicle gateways, to the in-vehicle networks, because they want uh, to to move their application from one uh, OEM to another OEM's truck. And uh, this is uh, very important for them because as I said, this is a low volume market with uh, very uh, specific applications. Sometimes uh, uh, they are uh, very fragmented, uh, they, uh, the, the functionality and they have to, to use the same gateway functionality. Otherwise they have to spend in a, uh, too much effort into optimization and software adaptation to the proprietary in vehicle gateways. So the truck uh, and trailer body equipment is often very specific, as I said, and the markets are highly fragmented. This is a, a challenge. In 2017, the German uh, standardization body Dean started the project to standardize the can based body builder network. I shortened my presentation because we are a little bit in delay. So this was done in the project Dean 4630, and this specifies a CAN-based network for commercial road vehicles, trucks, and trailers. Connecting body application units, this is what the bodybuilder uh, has as an ECU, with a telematics unit which could be provided by third parties. And of course, this should be standardized if you are not uh, the owner of the telematics units or not the producer. The network connects optionally also the in-vehicle gateway unit so that you can make uh, use of the information which is already in the truck and a fleet management unit, uh, which is standardized by uh, the ASEA association so that you can have these kind of, let's say logical entities in your network. In the main part of this uh, DEAN document, there are specified parameters mapped into dedicated parameter groups specified in the Annex A. In Annex A, the document also uh, references parameter groups which are already existing in the digital Annex of J9039 or in the ISO 11992 series, which is the truck trailer communication and of course in the FMS specification. Unfortunately, all parameter groups of the, e, of the in vehicle gateway units are currently as specified as optional. This means there is no off the shelf interoperability provided. So, this doesn't fulfill one of the requirements from the bodybuilders that every truck looks the same for them. The basic idea of these. Uh, Dean 4060, uh, for, for 4630 is that we have just specified virtual devices. So these are just software entities and how you map them into ECUs, this is depending on your application and depending on your, uh, your intention, what, what you want to do. Because as I said, there are highly different uh, body applications and maybe in one you can put all the things into one ECU and or you have to separate them. For example, here you see on the right side and the left side, two different implementations. 
on the left side, you see the uh, truck, uh, the, the telematic gateway unit combined with the in vehicle gateway unit and the fleet management unit. This is one ECU provided by the truck maker. And then you can have two uh, body applications, for example, or one uh, in ECU two and three. However, if you have your own uh, telematic network as a body builder, then you will uh, have your own uh, telematics units uh, in the ECU2. And the, the truck manufacturer provides just the uh, in vehicle gateway unit and the fleet management unit in ECU1. And if you have uh, just two applications running there, uh, from the bodybuilder, and, and you are the owner of both, then you can you uh, then you can implement both in one um, device in the ECU three, for example. This gives you an idea that this is a very flexible approach for the bodybuilders to implement whatever is appropriate for their application. It could be also a more complex system. Maybe we have the uh, Dean forty six thirty network. Uh, and then in addition, we have some, as you have seen from the implement, uh, you have a sub-layered network because you have a lot of ECUs in a complex body application. But complex body applications are, for example, refuse collecting uh, vehicles or uh, firefighting vehicles. They have up to five or six or even more uh, sub-layered networks. Uh, here you see an example for the refuse collecting unit. Then you have the body application unit which hosts on the other side the uh, refuse collecting unit controller uh, and um, then this is implemented by the uh, bodybuilder and uh, there's maybe also a second bodybuilder who has uh, submitted something as a subsystem for example for those applications in refuse collecting vehicles it could be a crane the crane comes normally from a uh, from a third party and you have to integrate this. So this means you have to connect to the uh, telematics unit and the fleet management unit. You have uh, then to co uh, connect both body electronic units. And in this case, in, as an example, the in-vehicle unit gateway is uh, in the ECU3. So anything is possible. And it's just up to you how you implement it because we are just using software entities for that purpose. And the communication is completely separated from the uh, real network. If you see also, this has more impacts. If you see here, for example, a truck and trailer, where you have both, uh, on both sides, uh, a body application, then you can do this directly via the well-known ISO 11992 or dash three uh, connections between truck and trailer. And uh, you can also do it uh, differently by means um, that you have uh, this implemented together with the Dean 4630. So this means a very powerful ECU, then providing additionally to the ISO 11.992.3 and the InVigo network also and gateway functionality to Dean 4630. So this is also anything is implementation specific. And we just provide uh, in this standard the software interfaces so that you can easily adapt this to your hardware requirements from your body application. So what we are currently have developed in the Dean 4630 document is we have specified uh, the behavior of lifting units and there we have two kinds of uh, lifting units specified, the vehicle mounted crane units, if you, you may know them. And we have the tail lift units, uh, which is quite often used by in, in, in the trucks as well as in the trailers. The same is for heating and refrigerating units. We have a generic uh, uh, HRU and we have a cargo space container, single multi temperature HRUs, uh, which are much more complex. Both are specified in the standard. We have also a reference to the refuse collecting uh, vehicles, if they are compliant to uh, a European standard or if they are not compliant to European standard. So you also can use the uh, Dean 4630 network for those applications. Then we have also um, uh, a virtual device specified for containers. 
This could be removable or non-removable tanks for liquids. It could be also tiltable or removable silo or bulk for, for bulk materials. And last but not least, we have uh, a tipper unit uh, specified, different styles of dump units, a roll uh, of container units, and so on. You see, that is just the beginning. There are much more body applications, but they are not present in the moment. In the next edition, we will add those applications um, if there are enough participants and they, if they see what we have done, and then they may like to use this also for their specific body applications. To give you just an idea, this could be also a nomadic gateway. So for forklifts, you have seen that a lot of trucks have forklifts and now you can send from the forklift via, for example, Bluetooth and the DIN 4630 network to the telematic unit into the cloud information on the um, forklift. Uh, could be that you have a preemptive maintenance uh, for preemptive maintenance services or for any other thing that you know that this device is still loaded uh, so that this device is, if it is battery powered or that you know how often it is used. And a lot of this information maybe is interested, interesting for the fleet managers. When we're separating the hardware and the software entities completely, then we need uh, sometimes uh, for the uh, information, hardware oriented uh, information so that we have uh, then uh, specific parameter groups specified. One of the information is what logical implements we have, uh, we, which we have implemented. We also may need uh, the input voltage of the ECU. And we want to observe this as well as the ECU temperature and the CPU temperature. These are three different parameter groups which we have specified. So just to get information about the ECU, independent what uh, functionality the ECU provides. For the general body application units, we have also specified a lot of parameter groups. Uh, you see that we have a, a vehicle acoustic warning request mapped to that, or we have the axle load mapped to that. And these two um, parameter groups are optional. And then we have a mandatory for the uh, body application unit one. There we have the bow type, though that means that we know what it is. And if this has a sublayered network, then we have also uh, the subtype or the subpart, and we have the remaining operating hours, operation hours. So this is uh, one of the things which we have. Uh, for the uh, second uh, body application unit specific parameter group, there we have the hydraulic oil temperature, oil pressure, etc. And not to go in, in too much detail um, and not to bore you, uh, we have uh, specified a lot of other things and mapped directly statically into the body application units three to eight. We also support uh, the general purpose message 23 and 24, which is specified in ISO 11992-3. And we have uh, for, for lighting applications, we have the um, LCMD a parameter group uh, optionally specified and uh, you've in reference to BSA J39 digital annex. We also need some information on the commercial vehicle status. Um, and we have also maybe a request uh, to the windshield uh, wiper request. In some applications, we need to wipe the windshield uh, when we have. Um, some applications and we're sitting in, in the truck and uh, want uh, to see uh, what is uh, the body application doing. Of course, then we have also a specific parameter group specified for each of the body applications. You see here as an example for the, um, uh, for the lifting units, uh, then we have the chain emergency stop status, we have the transport uh, position status, and for those which have a tail lift, we have the position status, we have the movement status, and uh, the user also can switch it on and off. So all this is in all details specified. This is the same as we have seen in, in the ISOBUS. Uh, Peter has not mentioned all the details, but this is just to show you that we are have it on the same level. For firefighting trucks, there's another Dean standard specifying the uh, in vehicle 
network gateway. This is done in Dean 14704. And this uh, gateway is also based on the Dean 4630, but it specifies additionally firefighting specific parameters, and they want to do it in their own a standard, not in the not integrated into the Dean 4630 standard. Additionally, uh, the this group also specifies the Dean 4700 standard. This is a can open based, uh, so to say, a sub layered network where, uh, where you connect firefighting equipment such as water cannons, light mast frequency inverters and electrical power supply. And the host controller is optionally connected to the body network providing the IGU. So this means anything is, even if you're using different application layers, you can integrate them easily and in a standardized way into one vehicle. 